Has it become a lot more difficult to be a value investor these days? Well, it's a lot tougher for him. Uh, you know, Buffett is famous for saying a fat wallet is the enemy of high investment returns, and, and he's right about that. Uh, but for better or worse, we don't have as much money to manage as Warren Buffett, and so we don't really have quite the challenges that he does, only looking at, uh, you know, the few top 50 or 100 companies. Uh, even in the S&P 500, there are plenty of uh, opportunities. Uh, you know, when you go back, uh, my students ask the same question, you know, it's going to be really hard, harder for us. But uh, I tell them, let's go back 20 years when you guys learned how to read and take a look at the most followed market in the world, the United States, most followed stocks, the S&P 500. Let's take a look at what's happened since you guys learned how to read. And I tell them from 97 to 2000, the S&P 500 doubled. From 2000 to 2002, it halved. From 2002 to 2008, uh, it doubled. From 2000, um, I'm sorry, to 2007, it doubled. From 2007 to 2009, it halved. And from, from 2009 to today, it's roughly tripled. So where does it go from today? Well, it, that was my way of telling them that people are still crazy and very emotional. And the S&P 500 is an average of 500 names. If you look under the covers of the dispersion of those companies, plenty of opportunities. So the S&P today, to answer your question, we value the S&P every day going back uh, from 1990. Bottoms up, the individual stocks uh, in the S&P on a daily basis so we can contextualize where do we stand today on a valuation basis. And right now we're in the 20th percentile towards expensive, meaning as compared to the last 28 years, market's been cheaper 80% of the time, more expensive 20% of the time. And from the 20th percentile in the past, it's not a prediction, just saying what's happened from this valuation level in the past, and it's been up 4 to 6% over the next year, 11 to 13 over the next two. So not so bad, but subnormal. Market average about 10% a year during those 28 years. So subnormal, but certainly not terrible. Sounds relatively expensive, at least compared to history. As a value investor, do you find opportunity in this market? Do you sit this out? Sure. We're not buying the index. We're buying the cheapest stocks in the index, and we're long-short investors, so we short the most expensive. So there's always things that are in favor and always things that are out of favor. And so we're trying to buy things that uh, are cheaper than the market and sell things that are more expensive than the market. Those always exist. Um, the thing that's going for us that we haven't had for the last 20 years is uh, you know, 20 years ago, you used to get a quarterly statement and pretty much throw it in the garbage. And now you can check your stock price 30 times a second on the Internet. So time horizons are shrinking. Uh, and that's really the, if you're a long-term investor, that creates lots of emotions, lots of uh, volatility in the short term. But if you, if you can keep your cool and, and actually value businesses and have a longer-term horizon, and even two or three years nowadays is a long-time horizon, there's plenty of opportunities out there always. I want to get into some specific opportunities. Your long Home Depot, which made news today reporting earnings that fell short of analyst estimates, disappointing guidance. Are you buying on the dip today? Are you still long term holder of Home yeah, Depot? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, stocks like Home Depot uh, are, well, Home Depot is a duopoly. It's got an above average business uh, trading cheaper than the market. Uh, huge returns on capital uh, relative for the retail business. They're, they only, Lowe's is their only main competitor. I mean, really hard to get a better setup or business than this. So, you know, the market overall is expensive, but this is a better business on average than the market and also cheaper. So it's a pretty great deal. You're also long Walmart and Boeing. What attracts you to those two stocks? Well, Boeing is also a duopoly. I mean, there's only Airbus is their only competitor. Uh, uh, it's got it earns uh, returns on capital that are quite high for you know capital intensive business. They, uh, you know, like I said, only have one competitor. Air travel is uh, you know continues to grow. Certainly grows over time. So once again, above average business at below average prices. That's that's pretty exciting. And Walmart's the same story. Also a duopoly with. Well, Walmart has more competition. They're not a duopoly, but they. Uh, are a great business. They have, uh, if you want to talk about economies of scale, if you're a retailer, that, that's the name of their business. They can do things cheaper. Their buying power is better. Uh, they have loyal customers. They're in places where consumers, they're convenient for consumers. So uh, they just built a business over time that does things better. And so once again, an above average business at a below average price. Now on the short side, Ford Align Technology Monster Beverage. Is it strictly valuation, or is there something else underlying? Well, those are all businesses? well. That's a great question. Uh, they're all uh, more expensive than the market. Align Technology is a fine business. They do Invisalign, you know, for braces, and mm -hmm. but they're they're coming off patent soon. There are competition coming in, so Smile you know, people. Direct club is other startups that are. 
getting into the fray? You know, like any business, there's a lot of competition, but when you're coming off patent, you're uh, uh, particularly vulnerable. So it's a really good business. It's a question of what price are you paying? And you're paying a very uh, high price. And Monster Beverage, you know, just for instance, they're, they're high price too. Coca-Cola has been a big part of their distribution. And uh, Coke is, uh, you know, it's a competitive business. Coke's even going into the uh, energy drink business. So th that could hurt them over time. And I'm not saying it's not a great business. I'm just saying it's very expensive and competition is coming. And Ford... Uh, is in a tough business. They don't really, you know, it looks like they're low PE stock, but they don't generate any cash. So, and, and they have a lot of CapEx coming their way. Uh, so we're just not too bullish on Ford. And the way we value things is on cash flows, not on earnings. And from that standpoint, uh, quite a, actually expensive. Now, I want to ask you about value investing kind of as a business throughout history. More recently, we've seen a, a systematic quantitative approach to value investing. Um, more people are kind of moving toward that and that traditional concentrated book and stock picking style of investing has uh, become few and farther between. How do you see uh, the future of value investing going? Uh, and do you think it will become easier over time that the cycle will turn in favor of value? Um, as we move forward in the cycle? Sure. Well, it really depends how you define value. Uh, traditionally, like places like Russell or Morningstar will define value as low price book and low price sales. And that's not how we define it. We define value investing differently. We value a business and try to buy at a discount. That's our definition of value. Uh, ben Graham, Warren Buffett's teacher, would say, figure out what something's worth, uh, pay a lot less, leave, leave a large margin of safety between. That's our definition of value investing. It's not low price book low price sales investing. Those are things that have traditionally rhymed with value, meaning if you're trading at a low price book ratio, a low price sales, your company's trading close to the historic cost of its assets means it's more likely out of favor. And if you buy a bucket of those, you know, you tend to find more than your fair share of cheap companies. But there's no, that's a correlation. Causation are cash flows. We value businesses like we're a private equity firm. And so valuation of the business, that never, that's what stocks are. They're not pieces of paper that bounce around that you put sharp ratios and sortinos on or other fancy ratios. They're ownership shares of businesses that you value and try to buy at a discount. So whether the market rewards us for our valuations in the short term, we ignore because that's what stocks are. I actually have taught at Columbia for 23 years. And I make a promise to my students first day of class. I promise them if they do good valuation work, the market will agree with them. It's I just never tell when. them when. It's yes, a matter it of when. <laughs> could be a couple of weeks, could be two or three years. But that, that is the secret, to, to have a steady, disciplined process to value companies and uh, to be confident enough to stick with it uh, You know, when it's not working in the short term. Market's very emotional in the short term. We try to ignore the noise.